knew it wouldn't work. The old timers, having spent all their working lives down our village pit, both felt they knew all there was to know about the ground above and below our village. The NCB, pursuing a successful outcrop policy in our valley, thought otherwise. Fully aware that the hillside they intended to excavate was dotted with underground springs, they were sure that modern technology would take care of that. Well, it might have done, but for the weather. Oh, how it rained that winter, and rained, and rained, and still rained. We would climb up the pasture in the early spring and through a little meadow to where the moorland began to look down into the huge crater man had made. The coal was there all right and we who had lived in the lee of the mines all our lives were fascinated by the seam running through the bottom of the hill looking for all the world like a dark oak beam. Despite all their pumping, the professionals had to give in and it would be some time before the necessary machinery could get to work to return the earth to its ancient depths. Meanwhile, it appeared that someone had said the villagers could help themselves to the coal. Word got around and cryptic notices appeared on certain coal house doors advising the coal man not to call until further notice. It was at this stage that my father, bad heart forgotten, joined the band. The pensioners had found a real part-time job and a gold mine to boot and he wasn't going to be left out. My mother was pleased with the coal, good quality it was, but worried about Pa, and rallied we two girls to either stop him or help him. We chose the latter. It appeared that the proper equipment was two old shopping bags and thus armed my sister and I joined the club. We trudged to the top of the outcrop and looked down on the men busy with their spades and bags and scrambled down to join them. We found that we walked on solid coal. We were quite welcome and informed that our bags would be filled for us in due course. But it was very wet stuff and whilst we were waiting we managed to scratch our own place on the side and discovered a nice dry seam. More trouble to get but dry. Having filled our bags, we set off to scramble up the side home. We had one problem the men didn't have, coal grit down our bras. But being the only ones taking our direction home, we could jettison this as required. It became quite a passion with us, and though we never did entirely sack the coal man, we viewed the rising black pile with great satisfaction. The exercise was doing our figures no harm into the bargain. There were hazards, of course. Having uncovered a nice little seam of our own, we would fill the bags and depart, only to find on our return that someone else had taken advantage of our efforts, helped themselves, and was fast disappearing over the side of the crater. We were philosophical about it all, and would set to work again with a will. Worse than this was the fact that the coal contained a quantity of what we hoped at first was gold. This turned out to be pyrite, and to put a lump of coal on the fire containing a good quantity of this sent us flying for cover as it spat out all over the room. The dog fled under the table and my father from the safety of his corner never failed to remark, it's like being back in the trenches. Hiding behind the table with the dog, we were forced to agree. Later, when with some regret we saw the whole hill filled in again, we had to content ourselves by picking amongst the stones and soil. I remember my brother-in-law, somewhat belatedly, reporting with a sack and an old pram to help reinforce his stock for the winter. He had overlooked that a sack which had held poultry food can hold rather more than one ton of coal, and coming down the last field, I was more than occupied in holding him back as the weight of the coal bore him forward at a lively trot. To crown it all, his pram broke down twice in the less than half a mile home. When the land was returned to something like its original contour, the rains still hadn't finished. After every downpour, all the topsoil came down the hillside into the village, into those very same cellars and coal houses. Finally, the new seeded grass took frail root and began to hold fast, and the moorland birds took over their old habitats again. It was just another memory to mull over, and a lovely one at that. For hadn't they been told they couldn't get young coal? Eee, but we weren't half glad they tried. It were jolly good stuff, pyrites and all. You can keep your gas. <laughs>